I'm Marisalisa Acevedo, and I'm a wheat Ross pathologist, and I'm the Associate Director for Science for the Delivering Genetic Gains in Wheat Project. One of the challenges that we are facing as a society is that we need to feed more people over the next 30, 40, or 50 years, and wheat is an extremely important crop in different parts of the world. Some of the regions where we traditionally grown wheat are facing some constraint because of climate change. Zones that are traditionally well suited for wheat now are facing drought. Um, the temperatures are much higher during the growing season. So the wheat that we are that we need to grow needs to be able to withstand those conditions. Uh, we're growing. We'll have to grow wheat in more marginal regions. We will have to grow with under less water availability. There's going to be salinity in some regions. Um, the nutrients in the soil have been depleted in several areas in the world. So we need to be able to produce more wheat with better quality under those conditions. So it is a very needed area of research. How can we really produce uh, more wheat with less resources. So that's the challenge that scientists are facing now. And during this project on delivering genetic gain in wheat, we hope that we can find better ways to produce wheat under those conditions. Over the last eight years in the durable rust resistant uh, in wheat project, we were able to develop a strong foundation for uh, developing new wheat varieties that were developed and deployed in different regions in uh, East Africa, including Ethiopia, Kenya, also in the Middle East. In addition, we were able to develop infrastructure necessary, not only for this particular project, but infrastructure that can be utilized for future projects in the region. For example, having the greenhouse facilities in Ethiopia, the development on a strong nursery facilities in Kenya and Ethiopia that has allowed us to screen varieties, but also will be able to use us for future projects. For example, to evaluate different agronomic traits that we want to evaluate in those regions. Those can be utilized. We have learned a lot during the process about what is necessary in terms of capacity building. We have now a strong network of scientists that are able to train other scientists um, in their programs. We can now collaborate internationally because we can communicate effectively. We all know how uh, evaluate rust in the field. We can also have projects in common because we can communicate more effectively. We have been able to train uh, scientists that can work in the field, but also that can do inoculations in the greenhouse. They can do marker-assisted selection. They understand what marker-assisted selection can do for their projects. Um, they have a network of people in different countries, in the US, in Australia, in South Africa, in Turkey. So now we have a group of scientists that can work together to achieve uh, better goals, larger goals, because those, are, uh, those connections are available. During the Durable Rust Resistant Project, we were able to bring together different technologies, uh, being able to build from technology that was available and develop uh, better uh, models for surveillance. Now we have a surveillance program in, in Ethiopia that can allow us for rapid information delivery and also capturing what's happening in the field and more or less being able to predict where the next uh, hot spot for disease may be over the next few weeks based on uh, the wind pattern and the environmental conditions. So during the having the surveillance uh, pr uh, models in Ethiopia, having the varieties that are available right now, but also a pipeline of genetic material that can be utilized in the future would allow us to build a stronger scientific community that can respond better to the needs in the region. The development of these uh, rust resistant high yielding wheat varieties that are adapted to regions in Kenya, Ethiopia, and the Middle East um, is the first phase to this genetic gain that we want to deliver over the next 10, 20 years.